season of flowers that have been in the uh, Louisiana super plant uh, program so far over the last uh, four or five years have been the uh, Swan Series Columbines, the Amazon Dianthus, uh, the Camelot Foxglove. Foxglove, of course, is also called Digitalis. Uh, red boar kale is a very good edible kale that we're using for an ornamental. Uh, the Sorbet uh, Series Viola is our Louisiana super plant. And this new well, bedding plant type delphinium called Diamonds Blue has been a very good uh, performer for us. Probably uh, many of y'all are familiar with the uh, Swan Series Columbines. Uh, we're using these as a cool season a bedding plant in Louisiana. We actually uh, have very good success in convincing home gardeners to plant these green in November, and then they flower uh, February, March, and going through uh, May. I think there's about seven or eight flower colors in the uh, Swan Theory Columbines, and they've been uh, doing very well for us. And when they're in commercial landscapes, they really offer a lot of, uh, of appeal, and everybody always wants to know uh, what these plants are. So. So these bicolors are, are certainly um, uh, different than what you typically see from the yellow uh, columbines that you would normally associate with. The uh, Amazon dianthus, uh, this is a seeded uh, dianthus from a Pan-American seed. Uh, there's three flower colors in these. There's also a, a neon duo, which is a, uh, a, a mix. Uh, the flowers are large. They're uh, very fragrant, a good butterfly gardening plant. Once again, you can plant these in the fall. You can also plant these in February and March. And usually the uh, Amazon dianthus for us lasts in the landscape till the uh, second week of June or maybe uh, mid-June or so. Uh, we've been pleased with those. And the, um, the rose-colored one there in the picture is a very nice plant and seems to be the one that most consumers prefer. Uh, we've been having good luck also with the Camelot uh, Series Fox Gloves. Uh, these have been our best performing Fox Glove and University Trials. Uh, you may remember the old All-America Selection winning variety Foxy. Uh, Camelot does outperform the uh, Foxy varieties. On the Camelot, there's a, a cream, a white, and a lavender, and a rose. I find the lavender and the rose performs a little bit better for us in the landscape than the cream and the white do, but all of the colors are very uh, nice plants. and. By the time you have this plant in bloom in the spring, you have a plant that's about uh, four uh, feet or so tall. You have about a two uh, foot of flower spike on those uh, on those plants. The uh, red boar kale, if you're looking for a new addition to the kale or the cabbages, uh, red boar is one you want to try. Uh, cold tolerant, uh, heat tolerant. Uh, once in a while it does bloom, but it's less prone to blooming and your other kales and other cabbages, so you don't get that bolting nearly as much. Usually when you plant it early in the uh, fall, mid-fall, it's going to be green. As the uh, winter comes in, you get the uh, darker uh, maroon, purplish uh, foliage color, and this plant is a really good, vigorous growing uh, ornamental kale variety. And you can see in that picture right there that the, uh, the uh, kale is actually taller than a uh, early flowering uh, foxglove is in the, uh, in the landscape. Uh, the uh, sorbet viola is a nice uh, purple and gold there, but there's actually about uh, 35 different flower colors in the sorbet viola. Uh, there's a new red, which you don't see in violas very much. Uh, decent heat tolerance in these. They're going to last about two weeks longer in the spring than your, uh, your pansies will. Um, so, uh, there seems to be a little bit less momentum in pansies right now and more momentum with using violas in the uh, landscape. And I think most of the garden centers have had a very good sales response to the uh, sorbet violas. A very good container plant also. You have some of the sorbet violas that have the uh, clear face of flowers, and some of them have the more blotchy flowers. Uh, this beacon field here is a really nice uh, color that a lot of uh, home gardeners uh, um, gardeners like. And the uh, the last cool season bedding plant we're going to talk about today is the Diamonds Blue Delphinium. Uh, it's uh, from Pan American Seed. It debuted three years ago, I believe. It's a uh, bedding plant type delphinium, only gets about 16 to 18 inches tall in the landscape. You can start planting in October, November, but you can also continue to plant through mid-March. And usually it lasts till the end of June 
for the uh, first part of July, so it's got a little bit of heat tolerance to it. But the main thing about this diamond's blue delphinium is how electric blue the flowers are. They are really a nice, um, outstanding electric blue flower in the landscape. And the flower color, you don't really see a whole lot in uh, bedding plants. Uh, and there's another picture, a close-up of the uh, diamond's blue uh, delphinium. On the uh, warm season of bedding plants that have been uh, Louisiana super plants, uh, we have a little bit of a uh, more extensive list here. Uh, some of these plants are very familiar to you all, probably the uh, Serena angelonius, the baby weaned begonias, uh, Senorita rosalita cleome, the uh, butterfly pentas, the uh, little ruby alternanthera, Joseph's coat, uh, bandana lantanas, mesa gallardius, the uh, luna siri hibiscus, uh, and then the uh, other uh, warm season plants for this year are the uh, tutti frutti uh, butterfly bush and the uh, Kali series of terrenia. Terrenia is also known as wishbone flower. Many of you all are probably familiar with the uh, proven winter plant, Senorita rosalita, um, thornless, spineless, no seed, so you get continual bloom in the landscape. This plant does get about four feet tall. It does get very large in the landscape, so I like to prune it back about halfway early to mid-summer just to uh, get the size under control a little bit, and that kind of reinvigorates the plant. But it lasts all the way to a first killing frost, and it's a very good butterfly gardening plant in the landscape. Uh, here's the Senorita Rosalita with some lantanas and the Mexican marigolds and some coleus in our uh, in our trial gardens at the experiment station in uh, Hammond. And you can see what kind of size those, uh, those plants wind up getting. The uh, butterfly uh, series pentas, uh, we've compared the uh, butterfly pentas uh, side by side with the new look and with the uh, graffiti. And we find the butterfly pentas do a little bit better. It seems like the butterfly pentas attract more butterflies than the other varieties of the pentas do. Uh, we've been very pleased with the uh, with those pentas. Uh, the uh, baby wing begonias, uh, some of the best genetics in your begonias is in the baby wing. There's a baby wing white, there's a baby wing pink, and there's also a baby wing that has bronze foliage that has white flowers. So baby wing bronze foliage with white blooms is also out there. Uh, these plants get about 16 to 18 inches tall. They'll take shade, part shade, part sun, and full sun. They're a very good plant. I think even out in West Texas, those may uh, do okay for you if you have the, um, the irrigation uh, under control there. Uh, there are some uh, baby wing begonias in the landscape at uh, Hammond. Uh, the Serena angelonias, a lot of angelonias being planted around the uh, country now. There's also the new dwarf or smaller version of the Serenas that's called the Serenitas. So the uh, Serenas and the Serenitas are both good plants. Uh, very drought tolerant. They don't need very much fertilizer. I find most people over fertilize angelonias and overwater angelonias. Usually if you want them to bloom the best, you need to grow them on the dry side and you need to uh, hold off on the fertilizer on the uh, angelonias. Uh, about four or five different flower colors in these, pink, lavender, lavender pink, blue, white, so you have uh, several different flower colors in the uh, serenas. There's the new blue uh, serena that came out a couple of uh, years ago. The uh, Little Ruby Alternanthera, Joseph's Coat, uh, these are nice plants. They do well in full sun, a foliage plant for the uh, front of your landscape beds. Uh, the more sun this plant gets, the darker ruby the uh, foliage becomes. I find this plant lasts very good through the fall and uh, does uh, very nice as a 12 to 14 inch, 14 to 16 inch foliage plant for the front of your uh, landscape beds. The uh, bandana lantanas, uh, we like the bandana lantanas from uh, Syngenta Flowers. Of course, there's the uh, Luckies and the Landmarks and uh, Chapel Hill uh, lantanas that are out there, and uh, all of them are good performers too. I just like the compactness and the mound and growth habit on the bandanas that you don't really see in other lantana varieties. You, uh, it really has a nice shape and the most compact form of any a lantana that's on the uh, that's on the market at the current time. 
when your lamp handles aren't performing well, they may have lace bugs on them. Um, there may be another reason, but they do prefer full sun, and they're very uh, drought tolerant. Anytime uh, my lamp handles aren't doing well, I just cut them back and fertilize them, and usually in a couple of weeks they're looking good again, and they're uh, flowering uh, well again. The uh, Mesa Gallardias. The Mesa Gallardias have been out for a few years now. These are also a, a seed Gallardia from a parent American seed. Uh, they will actually be a perennial. Uh, some people do treat them as an annual, but I've had very good luck in keeping these alive in the landscape for about 18 months or so. Uh, they're drought tolerant plants. There's uh, three colors in these, the, uh, the uh, bicolor, the uh, yellow, and the new uh, peach. All of these do very well. Uh, they uh, need well-drained soil. You could plant these in the spring, but also you could plant these in the fall. You could plant these in the summer. So there are several different times during the year that you can plant the Mesa Gallardius and be as successful uh, with them. They make a nice container plant. Uh, you may have to do a little bit of selective deadheading in the landscape to keep the flowers fresh. I find that deadheading the Gallardius does improve the long-term uh, landscape performance of, uh, of those plants. The Aluna hibiscus, um, these are the, the native rose mallow, swamp mallow hibiscus that you see, or one particular um, species of those. Uh, these get two to three feet tall, two to three feet wide. There's four flower colors in these. The uh, Aluna pink swirl seems to be the one that does the best for us, but the other flower colors are very good. I find these the best when you plant them in May, a little bit later in the spring, plant in May, and they usually flower well for you until about September the 15th or so. And these will be perennial in some areas. In some areas of Texas, they may not be perennial. I just don't have enough experience with, with the northern hardiness of these, but we have success with these coming back in hardiness zone 8B, 9A, and also uh, 8A. So um, it just depends on the particular a microclimate situation that you're looking at. The flowers are usually about the seven to eight inches in diameter, so they're not as big as your older varieties or your vegetatively propagated uh, dinner plate type hibiscus, but these are nice for a seeded type uh, perennial uh, hibiscus. And there's some of the Luna hibiscus with some uh, vinca in a, a commercial landscape bed in a Baton Rouge. The uh, Tutti Frutti Buddleia. This is one of the uh, butterfly bush varieties that is in the Flutterby series. Uh, these are from Ball Ornamentals. And uh, it's a dwarf Buddleia, uh, two to three feet tall, two to three feet wide. Uh, very perennial for us in Louisiana. Uh, we've had them in the ground for four years now, and they've done well. Uh, we've had about 25 to 30 varieties of Buddleia in landscape trials. And any time during the year you go out and look at the landscape trials, Tutti Frutti is the variety that seems to stand out the most. So uh, we particularly uh, like this particular uh, flutter my variety, although there's a couple others that, that are very good too. Blue Heaven is one that's also a very, uh, a very, very nice one. Uh, some of the uh, bud leaves that are on the market now have sterile seed. Also people are working on the compactness improvement in flower color, bigger blooms. Uh, so a lot of uh, breeding work being done on the uh, butterfly bushes right now, and many more good varieties are still coming on the market. You have the Buzz series. You have the Miss Molly and Mitch Ruby from uh, Proven Winners and some other uh, varieties that are out there. If you're looking for a, a warm season bedding plant for shade, uh, maybe you're having trouble with impatience due to the uh, the uh, downy mildew, you may want to try the Kauai terrenia. There's a number of colors in the Kauai terrenias. Uh, here's the blue and white. Here's the deep blue. Uh, here's the uh, lemon drop, uh, the magenta. Uh, we've been very pleased with these plants. We plant them in early to mid-April in the shady garden, and they are still in bloom and performing well on October 15th. So no deadheading, no cycling in and out of flower. Uh, the foliage color kind of always looks a little bit pale green on perennia, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's nitrogen deficient. It just seems like that's the kind of uh, foliage color you're going to have on those particular plants. Uh, so I just wanted to throw a few other um, 
annual flowers and uh, herbaceous perennials and ornamental grasses out there. The uh, perennial salvias, uh, this is the new uh, perennial salvia called Amistad, a very nice plant. It's in the uh, Southern Living uh, Plant Program. I think everybody has access to this particular uh, perennial salvia now, Amistad. And you can see it has that black calyx like the uh, black and blue salvia does. But I find this plant is a, is a better growing plant, more vigorous plant. It, the flower color is more intense, so the Amistad does very well. Uh, here's Greg Rant's uh, Henry and Augusta Duhlenberg salvias, salvia farinaceae. These are very common in Texas. I know a lot of you all probably are familiar with these plants. And uh, the uh, Henry and the Augusta Duhlenberg uh, salvia farinaceae are very nice. And uh, Greg Grant also now has a improved uh, variety of this called Rebel Child, which has blue flowers that are a little bit better than the Henry uh, Duhlenberg uh, blue ones. Uh, copper plants, so many copper plants on the market. We need to go back and find these older copper plants like Louisiana red, Opelousas red, Marginata bronze, really nice foliage plants for the landscape. The heat is where they do best, you know, in the Texas landscape, mid, uh, late spring through the uh, fall months, these would be fabulous. You can grow them in four-inch pots, uh, one-gallon pots. I have people that grow these in three-gallon pots with larger varieties. So all these uh, copper plants like Louisiana red, Opelousas red, and some of the older varieties uh, could be uh, recollected and kind of redistributed again. Uh, Brent Timberton and Overton is trialing some of these uh, this year. He's got about 25 varieties. Uh, the plant at the front of this landscape bed here is the intense uh, Celosia. Uh, this is a fall picture with the uh, with the fireworks, uh, purple fountain grass, and the hibiscus acetacella uh, behind it. But just a very very nice uh, fall performing Celosia. These were actually planted in the spring, but really they come into their own in August, September, October. So you know the spring performance is not great on them. But the fall performance is very, very good. And actually, a lot of garden centers sell these in August and September for like a late summer addition to the landscape, like we do with marigolds and with uh, zinnias. Uh, here's the Chapel Hill yellow, Chapel Hill gold lantana. The Chapel Hill varieties have been doing very well for us, uh, very perennial. Uh, all the new avincas that are on the market, this is one of the core avincas. I think this is core of strawberry. The core of Incas, the uh, Titans, uh, the uh, Nirvanas, all of those are good plants. And the uh, Cora and the uh, Nirvana uh, series have some uh, resistance to uh, Phytophthora uh, root rot and the uh, area of white problem that we have with Vinca uh, when they're overwatered or get too much uh, rain on them. This is the improvement of the uh, Goldstrom of Rubecchia that's called Early Bird Gold. Early bird gold does very well for us. Uh, June, July, August blooms, and also you can get some fall blooms out of these. A very nice plant. Early bird gold, uh, Rubecchia. Uh, this is one of the new flower colors in the Endurascape of uh, Verbenas uh, from Ball Floor Plant. Uh, Enduros, Enduros started last year with three colors. Now this year the name has been changed to Endurascape, and there's eight colors in these. Uh, they're still not as good as we really want in a perennial verbena, but they are a nice new series. We still don't have anything in some of these other colors nearly as good as what Homestead Purple uh, has traditionally uh, provided to us. Uh, marigolds, the uh, African marigolds, the French marigolds, uh, spring planting, fall planting, we do kind of like you all do in uh, Texas. We recommend adding zinnias and marigolds to the landscape in the uh, late summer months, and they really last for you very well through first killing frost. And really time, really a lot of the time, your late summer planting of marigolds will outperform your spring planting of marigolds. These are some of the uh, Durangos right here in our trial gardens at Hammond. Uh, the uh, fireworks, uh, red foliage um, fountain grass, I think most of you all know this plant, uh, four, four and a half feet tall. It's going to be an annual. In the colder areas, it's going to be a perennial in, in zone 8B, 9A, 9B. Um, 
the uh, the fireworks is the red foliage one. There's also one called cherry sparkler, and there's also this one right here that has that is the uh, the uh, white and the green variegated foliage of sky rocket. So sky rocket is not very good for us too. I really like some of these grasses that you can treat as an annual. They're not they're easier to maintain. Just treat them as an annual. Take them out and replant them the next year. And they're so much nicer and easier, and they stay fresher than some of the the, um, the other grasses that we use in our in our landscape, like miscanthus and some of those particular uh, plants. The uh, land eye series for Venus have also done well for us. The best of the land eyes is this bright pink. I've kept this alive in landscape trials for about two to three years, and uh, the land eye bright pink is the best variety of the uh, land eye uh, flower colors. The, uh, the new echinaceas, there's a lot of new seed propagated echinacea. There's a lot of new uh, vegetatively propagated echinaceas. These are the powwows. The powwows are all America selection winners. Powwow white and the uh, powwow wild berry both do very well. The uh, profusion zinnias, I think these are going to be on the Texas Superstar list in the future. Uh, the profusion uh, zinnias and also the uh, very comparable series called the Zaharis. Um, there's about six or seven flower colors in these. There's some that have double flowers, and these perform a very well for us, too. Uh, ornamental peppers, uh, I know these sell a lot at the garden centers in September, October. A purple flash is a very nice one. We like purple flash, and it does very well in our landscapes in Hammond. I know many of you all have probably faced this uh, downy mildew uh, issue on impatiens. Uh, we don't really know from one year to the next uh, whether the impatient downy mildew is going to be a problem or not, but we're just uh, uh, encouraging folks to use some of the divine New Guinea impatiens and some of the other uh, new series of uh, impatiens. You can maybe try uh, something like sun patients in the shade. I know a lot of times in Texas, sometimes the sun patients perform better in a little bit of a shady situation than they do in a sunny situation, but the sun patients do well, sun and shade for us in Louisiana. You may also want to try some of the uh, perennial as a, a substitute for the impatients in a, uh, in a shady uh, situation. So we have a, um, we have a website, lsuagcenter.com Hammond. We also have a Facebook page. We would like for you all to uh, like us. Uh, there's my email. Uh, we send out uh, several emails every month, uh, trial garden reports, ornamental horticulture, uh, e-news updates to let everybody know about what's going on at the uh, LSU Ag Center. So I will certainly uh, welcome any phone calls or emails, and I'll be glad to add you all to our uh, email list. And uh, you're also welcome to see what we're doing at our uh, Facebook page. So that's a little bit of a summary of some of the uh, work that we're doing. Uh, we're going to have an uh, open house on Thursday, June the 5th, and also we're having a field day on Thursday, October the 9th, if anybody is interested in coming to Hammond and uh, attending one of our uh, programs or one of our uh, workshops. So uh, that's uh, some of the information we have for you all today. I'll uh, ask Dr. Gu if we have any uh, questions. So um, if, um, if you do, I'll be glad to uh, try to answer them for you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Alan. Uh, we do have a uh, we do have a couple of uh, questions, and while I you know, while I get these uh, questions ready, and I would in, I'm going to show this uh, show this again uh, this this panel again. Just you know, show you here's the question panel. So that's where it, you could type in your uh, your questions. So. Um, here's the first one. Alan, can you see this? Uh, right now, I still see your question panel. Let's see. Okay. I think we have a little... A delay, yeah. A, just a little delay, yeah. Um, 